Professionals in the medical field need to be able to identify specific areas of the human body. So we use specific names for regions of the human body. Instead of using a word like arm, we have specific areas of the arm which we are div have divided into regions. And we give these regions specific names. It is important to understand these, these terms as they are used often in anatomical language throughout your text, throughout readings, and throughout case studies that we will address. In addition, doctors and nurses tend to use these words when addressing a specific injury or disease or illness. So starting at the superior portion of the human body, on the anterior and posterior sides, the region of the head is referred to as cranial. Continuing on the anterior side, the cranial region ends where the eyes, nose, and mouth begin. And so the area of the eyes, nose, and mouth is named the facial region. On the posterior side, the region of the neck is known as the neutral region. There is actually a ligament here called the neutral ligament that actually attaches the base of the skull to your first cervical vertebrae. It stops the head from moving forward, especially in an infant before the muscles have developed in the neck. On both the anterior and posterior side, there's a region of the neck called the cervical region. This might be easy to remember because if you've ever seen an injury take place where a person's been removed um, in an emergency vehicle with a collar around their neck, the, neck, the collar around their neck is called the cervical collar. It's meant to keep the neck in a line in case there has been any neck injury during, during, their, um, during their injury or for the reason that they are in the emergency vehicle. Continuing on both the anterior and posterior sides, the area of the shoulder is known as the acromial region. This is specifically named because the acromial end of the scapula and the acromial end of the clavicle come together at this point. It does cover a large portion of the shoulder. Continuing on just the posterior side, the area of your shoulder blade, which in anatomical terms is your scapula, is called your scapular region. And it covers most of the area where your scapula is. Medial to the scapular region is a very small region called the interscapular region. The interscapular is located between the scapular region and the vertebral region. The vertebral region, of course, corresponds to the vertebrae, which are in your spine. Both the anterior and posterior sides have a region of the upper arm known as the brachial region. Most of the muscles in the upper arm begin with the words brachii, such as biceps brachii, brachioradialis. Continuing on the anterior side, the muscles of the chest are known as the pectoralis muscles, and hence the region of the chest is often known as the pectoral region, where these muscles are located. Medial to the pectoral region is a small area known as the sternal region. Just deep to the sternal region where the skin is located would be the sternum, which is attached to your ribs. On both the posterior and anterior side, there is a region known as the thoracic region. This is basically the region of your lungs. On the posterior side, this region is slightly larger than on the anterior side. On the anterior side, there's a region called the abdominal region. This abdominal region covers most of your abdomen, starting at your sternum and traveling all the way down to your hip region. Medial in the abdominal region is a very small locus known as the umbilical region. This is the location, of course, of the umbilical cord during fetal development. Both on the anterior and posterior side, the elbow is known as the cubital region. And the lower arm, where your radius and ulna are located, is known as the antebrachial on both the anterior and posterior sides. On both the anterior and posterior sides, the wrist is known as the carpal region. This will be familiar to you because you've all heard of carpal tunnel syndrome, which is where a tendon in this carpal region is impinged. We will be discussing that more during the skeletal unit. On the posterior side, there's an area known as the lumbar region. This is the lower back region. You may have heard of several devices developed to help support the lower back, such as lumbar seating. 
Inferior to the lumbar region and medial is an area known as the sacral region. This is the area of your tailbone. Lateral to the sacral region is an area known as the gluteal region, which is the home of three gluteal muscles, gluteus maximus, medius, and minimus, and the largest muscles in the posterior side. On both the anterior and posterior side, the upper leg is known as the femoral region. You would commonly call it your thigh. It is the location of the quadriceps on the anterior side and the hamstrings on the posterior side. The hand is typically known as the manus, but the palm side in the hand is known as the palmar region, where as the back side, where your knuckles are, um, and as a less sensitive area, is known as the dorsum of the hand, referring to the dorsal region of the hand. Dorsum is another word for dorsal. Continuing on the anterior side, the region of the knee is known as the patellar region. This is in reference to, or is joined with, the idea that the kneecap is known as the patella. On the posterior side, the area of the knee is known as the popliteal region. Distal to the popliteal and patellar regions, both the anterior and posterior side of the human body, contain a region near the calf or shin area known as the curl region. Distal to the curl region is the region of the tarsals. This is an area of the ankle and home of the tarsal bones, several bones which make up um, a portion of the foot. Distal to the tarsal region is the top of the foot, known as the dorsum. In addition, the portion of your foot where you would rest your weight if you were standing on your heel is known as the calcaneal region. The bone in this area is known as the calcaneus. These are the major regions of the body. You will need to be able to know, understand them and utilize them through our different case studies and topics that we cover. One last area, the coxal region refers to the area of the hips. You are to put your hands on your hips on the side of your body, this would be the coxal region. Study these areas and make sure that you can identify them.